going to just focus on my piece of paper in front of you and I'm going to can my video and you know you do as you like there. So I'm looking at this piece of paper and this is what I am physically recording. I'm not recording your faces or any other windows. But this piece of paper is going to be like some delivery here. And once in a while, I could show you another window, an Excel spreadsheet, a handout, a web page, things like that. I can easily do that. And those things then get recorded. Uh, depends on your experience in the Zoom window before. You also see that there's another participant in the meeting uh, besides you two and me, there's my paper is a participant in this meeting. And as soon as I rename it, my whiteboard is a participant in this meeting. You can see my whiteboard because it's sharing video right now. In fact, if I walked over to it, there may come a time where it might be handy for me to write something on the whiteboard. So, you know, when that comes, then we'll do it. And then I can add the whiteboard to the recording or focus the whiteboard only the recording or go back to the paper, which usually I'm mostly hanging out on the paper. So, I am learning how to do this alongside everybody else. And uh, I do not know how to do everything, <laughs> not even nearly. It's kind of like operating your calculator. You can do a lot of things on your calculator, but there's a couple hundred buttons on there, even behind the scenes in the screens that uh, I don't even know about. So uh, speaking of my calculator, it must be somewhere. So I'll show you a calculator in a short time. And we might actually get to talk about something in statistics here, but mostly I wanna make sure everybody's oriented. Even if they're not present in this meeting, they're gonna view this video. Okay, so we're on a roll. So uh, yeah, my name's Dave, David, either one is fine with me. Mr. Edmund, whatever you're most comfortable saying, you can speak it or type it, and I don't mind. I've taught at Delta College for you know, quite some time. Uh, I really enjoy the statistics class because statistics, and I've given you a couple emails where I've kind of hinted at this, is kind of practical. <laughs> you know, sometimes people say, oh, where am I ever going to use a quadratic formula? <laughs> Okay, maybe you're right, maybe you won't. But so much information is being thrown at you every day. And maybe in today's society, even more and more information. And you are often asking yourself, is that true? <laughs> is that real? <laughs> now, I'm not going to solve all your problems or any of the world's problems, but Statistics is a weapon that can show you where things are not to be believed sometimes. And statistics is a weapon that people can use against you in a lot of different ways. I don't mean statistics the book or statistics the course. I mean burying you with information that's hard to sort out or may not be true. You know, apart from information that's simply not true, sometimes it's the information that's partially true or even 90% true that's gonna be used against you to fool you, to trick you, to manipulate you. Like I said, a math class is not going to solve all of those problems, but it will give you some abilities and some weapons 
at least maybe to prick up your spidey sense in case you're saying, hmm, I wonder if that's true. Maybe I should investigate further. So that's kind of my introduction. Step number two is let's take a look at my website. So I'm gonna share a screen with you. And the screen looks like this. And the screen is over here. So I'm gonna go get it. And always excuse me when I'm bopping around here because I'm always trying to make sure that what I'm seeing on my screen is what you're seeing on your screen. So right now you are looking at my webpage. And if you want, just clue me in or send me a message or something like that, or just leap in and say, hey, you're not sharing your screen. Oh, you're not sharing your paper. Oh, you're not sharing that web page. Because I'm fumbling around sometimes too. This is my website. And I kind of believe in simple, no nonsense to the point stuff. So there's no decoration, there's no games here but it's just everything I do at Delta College. And I've even pared some things down considerably because of the situation we're currently in. I don't wanna decorate things and waste people's time. I've sent you a link to our homepage, but if you want to know more about the things I do or the courses I teach, I list all the courses I teach by semester and of course, the courses in the future are just projections, but these are the courses I'm teaching in this semester, intermediate algebra, trigonometry, our statistics course, and a differential equations course. I've sent you the link specifically to this page. This page, you can see in the title bar, in the URL bar, is Math208Home. It will always be the first page you can go to. You can bookmark this page. And every week, I'll give you a little introductory blurb. In fact, I had an introductory blurb and I revised it and I don't see the revision on my webpage. So what am I gonna do? I'll just upload that revision and poof. Okay, so this is just a short introduction to week one. But here you can also refer to our syllabus, which we'll hit in a second, resources, and an outline for every week of the course. I fill things in as we go, mostly. So I don't have things filled in for the 12th week, but we do have a schedule. So bookmark this page. It'll always give you a link to the current week, some talk about what we're doing this week, more details as we go along. Today is about a, a lot of introductory stuff. And then links that are necessary or useful to you. This course, the college labeled is online and I didn't think that was awesome. So I committed that say, okay, if we were meeting, we would meet 90 minutes twice a week. I'm gonna record sessions 90 minutes twice a week and post them on a YouTube channel. You can participate in the live recordings or you can just watch the videos. I have office hours here also by Zoom meeting. And you can click on any one of these, some in the morning kind of, some in the evening kind of. Uh, I don't mind making appointments. And I'll tell you just honestly and directly, oh, I'm not available at that time or, oh, great, that's fine, let's, let's meet. But uh, if you're available at these times, you can always use these office hours or ask me for another. Uh, later, we'll get into this, but if you want to send me a question written down, you know, of course, there's always the email, you know, like you can snap a picture and attach it to an email. <coughs> but if you want to, send me a particular question written down or you say can you look at this work can you tell me if this is right or not you know sometimes it's just really fast to see what you wrote and for me to write back and you see what i wrote so these two links are to drop boxes where you can upload a file 
and when you upload the file, then you get a confirmation that you uploaded the file and I get a notification that you sent me a file. So more about that later. Uh, I, I can click on one and I won't cause any damage. If I click on this assignments link, it'll just open a Dropbox window asking you to add files. Some pop-up window might come here so you will not see the pop-up window that comes. But if I add a file from my computer and I'll just pick out some harmless file, I'm in a pop-up box right now and you don't see it. But then I picked out a file from another classroom. I could type my name in. I don't have to spell it. I could type in my email. Thank goodness for autocomplete sometimes. And then I upload. And I get a confirmation, you know, pretend this is you. You get a confirmation that your file uploaded. And I get a notification and a timestamp that you uploaded that file at, uh, you know, 12.50 on Monday, January 11. Always look for the confirmation. And if you need some kind of physical in-person confirmation, don't hesitate to send me an email. But this is the way you can submit questions and some of our homework we're gonna submit this way. Okay, let's look at the weekly schedule. I don't have everything filled in on every week page, but this is the schedule that we're gonna follow for 16 weeks. Now you may say, but there's only 15 weeks of instruction and you're right, 15 week term at Delta College. But remember we got a spring break here on week nine. So I just always think of it as 16 weeks on the calendar, four by four. So week nine, spring break, I'm not gonna put any assignments in there. I'm just putting it down there for continuity. Look at how the course is organized, at least here's the first, uh, let me shrink those words. Yeah, shrinking or pumping up the words does not always work on your end. I appreciate that. So remember, you can always go to the live website, but we're here in week one. These are the four sections we're gonna cover. And by the time we reach week six, we're gonna have our first exam. The first exam will cover chapters one through five, but notice right now we are not doing every section of every chapter we're doing you know, what we want to do in this course or what the math department says we're doing in this course. So don't worry. We're going to kind of cover 13 chapters in the book. Sure, but not every section of every chapter. This is our schedule right here. Notice also, and this will be the way we run and I'll help you as we get to there. In week six, I just have review and exam not presenting any new material for you. I want you to concentrate on doing the exam. And I'll have the same two video sessions like we're having now, but they'll just be opportunity for you to ask review questions and things like that. Everything really has to be driven by your questions. That's kind of the challenge in this situation. So don't hesitate to ask questions. I, yeah, and, and I see the note from you. Uh, you know, sometimes the audio is shaky. Sometimes the audio video is goofy. I know that's going to happen. That's not necessarily your connection. It might be my connection. But the recording is usually solid. We are recording properly. And I'll show you where to get the recordings later if something goes crazily wrong. For six weeks. And then here comes some more weeks seven through 12, and we'll cover chapter six through 10. And then we'll have another exam just on those chapters. I cut the course into three sections, one through five, six through 10. Notice spring break interrupts us there. And then uh, the last few weeks of the course, chapters 11, 12, and 13 with your third exam. 
The third exam only covers chapters 11, 12, and 13. There's, I don't, I'm not gonna use the word final exam. I just have three exams. They're all equally worth the same. And they just cover the sections that we're talking about. That's what we need to do. Okay, so you can always click on any of these links. Uh, let's hit the syllabus quickly and hit the resources page. The resources page I here provide, although I don't have a lot of stuff uploaded to it yet, kind of links to kind of a catch-all place. Like if you say, what week did he give us those handout in? When did he give us that handout? When did he post the video? Well, the resources page is gonna have all links, all handouts, all videos. So when you click on the resources page, you might be able to you know, find something, you know, a complete outline of the book, I've got some homework for you. I've got some written homework. I've got exams. I just bundled them all together and called assessments. So here's a complete record of all the assessments this semester. Three exams. Uh, by my count, 11 homeworks. Not a homework every week, 11 written homeworks. I'll tell you the purpose of those in a second. Not every week, but many weeks. And then I'll illustrate this for you too, the Newton Alta homework, the Newton Alta assignments that I've got grouped here with kind of more broad due dates. <coughs> but I just want you to know if you need a handout and you forgot where it came from, if you want to say, where's the link to that video? I've got some YouTube playlists here, and I've got individual, individual video clips here on topics like welcome to our course homepage or week one in Math 208. I kind of pre-recorded a couple things like what we're doing right now for people. Okay, technology. Uh, I'm going to use the graphing calculator TI-84 plus in this course, but there's another cool thing online, it's called Desmos. It's kind of a graphing calculator website. It doesn't do everything calculator does, but it does a lot and it does it kind of smoothly. So I like Desmos a lot, we'll use it when we can. Excel is a, you know, probably, and I'm not a Microsoft person, I'm kind of an Apple person, but I would say, I will say freely, that Microsoft Excel is probably the single greatest computer application ever written. And in particular to us in statistics, it's gonna be really useful. It'll save you a lot of time, help you double check your work as I show you how to use it. So, you know, mostly we'll be hanging out in the calculator, but every once in a while, maybe today to start with, I'll pull up an Excel spreadsheet just to show you how you could do things. Okay, so you can, basically I have a long page here, right? But uh, you manage it through the menu at the top, resources, handouts, announcements, notes, graph paper, formula sheets, when we come to that. Here's some announcements for you. Uh, you can read these announcements at your leisure but the math department offers two student awards every year, the Don Schmidt Award and the Math Graduate Award. Uh, you may qualify for one of these awards. And if so, read this, talk to me. There are, these are monetary awards. So there is an incentive for these. Uh, you can read through them and then talk to me if you think some of them might fit you, but uh, let's have a talk. Honors program. Here's a video from the honors director, Mark Brown. And there's a lot of cool things about the honors program. Tutoring center services. I think you wanna check into this too, because there are some math 208 study groups. And I think I heard from the tutoring center that they were offered Friday at 10 a.m. Now I do not know their schedule and I do not control their schedule, but study groups would probably be reliable and I don't know what uh, 
flexibility they have in their times, but you might talk to them. Apart from recording the video of every class, I will take these notes that I write and copy them and post them. Because then you'll say to yourself like, oh, he wrote that down, but I forgot where he wrote that down. I didn't write that down. So I will write down everything we're doing. And then I will copy this, post it to the website under each day so that you at least have some record if you want to have a backup. Same thing with the office hours. When you come to the office hours, if we're scribbling problems together or if we're doing problems together, I will post links to those notes here. If no one's at an office hour, I'll remove the date, you know, because I won't post emptiness. But that's, uh, you know, something you can use. Some graph paper here. I'll show you some other graph paper as we go along. We'll post some formula sheets as we go along. Videos to class sessions, recommended problems or topics. So, you know, this is already on our YouTube channel. You've already done a little homepage introduction with me, but for the people who hadn't, this link will just send you to my YouTube channel. Hi, my name's Dave, David Redman. Okay, I'm gonna skip that part. <laughs> but I just walked people through my homepage in this five minute video. Okay, so I know we're not face-to-face. -face. Video is not a bad way to help each other. So if you post questions to me, sometimes I'll post a video of the answer too. I wanna to post writing and video. Writing because you need to learn how to write these things. But video because you know talking to someone is usually very quick. Okay, and then some technology, you know, like how to use Zoom, where to get Zoom. I'll talk more about these in a second. Microsoft Lens, Apple Notes, Adobe Scan. You know, a little tip on joining a Zoom webinar if you've never done it before. And then our assignments folder if you need to submit an assignment. I'll always keep these links in front of you. <coughs> but this is my resources page. In case you just lose track of something and you wanna see the whole encyclopedia of resources. Okay, I'm still talking too much and not focusing on any questions you have. So you don't hesitate to throw any questions in the audio or chat. Let me just walk through our syllabus. That'll be the last major drudgery. And then maybe we can do some fun thing. So our syllabus is linked here on our webpage. And you know you're on the syllabus because it's a syllabus. I just have an introduction to the course, to me, my expectations in the course, and exactly how you're gonna be graded in the course. So the course, you've pretty much worked out because you've registered for it. 208 WN850, Elementary Statistics. It is an online course, but I will have these Zoom meeting presentations. And you click on this link, you join the Zoom meeting. I will record them, as I've said. Course website is what we're looking at. And I wanna make sure I emphasize this. I put nothing in e-learning. I like to control what I post. I don't like people to have to log in to even enter the course. So yeah, I can't avoid some things like the Alta homework is logging in to something but I just want stuff to be freely available to everyone. You know, maybe they're registered in the course, maybe they're not, maybe they're a former student. So all my stuff is on my personal website here, which is hosted at Delta College, but no login required. Prerequisite is by the book, math level five. If you want that in English, that generally means you've taken our intermediate algebra course or an ordinary algebra course in high school, junior, senior level, maybe what high schools sometimes call algebra two, or you've got some other placement score. By the computer, you met the placement and prerequisite levels for this course. If you have any questions about that, absolutely talk to me, but usually that registration part works. Okay, now let's talk about required materials. 
our textbook is called Introductory Statistics and very cool textbook. It is available for free online. You do not have to purchase a textbook. And this link will take you right there or you can bookmark it yourself. Now, if you want to purchase a book, which I myself always like to have a book in my hand, uh, it's like 25 or $35 hardcover. I don't know what the cost is paperback. You can get a PDF of the book if you just want to keep it on your whatever, computer device, whatever, for free. But it's handy when I'm talking to you in the classroom that we could just pull up the book right here online. So and I got an annoying pop-up window. So here I am looking at the book. Uh, let me see if I can give you the whole book. Here's the whole book table of contents. I'm viewing it online right now, but you could download an app to view it. You could download a PDF. You could order a print copy all from this website. OpenStax is a very interesting organization. So in week one right here, we're talking about the first four sections of chapter one. We will not do chapter one, section five or six. And then you can go on to the next chapter, the next chapter, and the next chapter throughout the book. The book is organized. I mean, it's a nice book. It's organized in a very nice way. I want you to look at the end of chapter one here, just in the uh, contents. At the end of each chapter, it summarizes key terms and does a little chapter review for you. It gives you practice problems, homework problems, some of which I'll assign. And then it also gives you references and solutions. So actually answers to the practice and homework problems, the odd ones, right there in the end of the chapter, not at the end of the book. That saves you a little shuffling. So I like the way they organize their sections. I like the examples she's made. And I like how they organize these terms, review, practice, homework, and solutions at the back. So, you know, that's my point of view. So you can dive in and see what you like, but you can completely read and consume this book online. I do not like reading things on screens because I like to page around. But if I was stuck without my book somewhere, at least I know I could get to it if I needed to online. Okay, so let me back out of here until I go back to my web page. Good, so there's the book. Homework system is Newton Alta. And this has got an interesting philosophy too. So you do need to create an account at newton.com. I'll log into this in a second. Here's our course code right here. So you click on this course code, you get taken to my course. And here's a positive thing, which is kind of the result of everybody being online. You, got, you can enter this course right now. You can start doing work right now with a grace period I don't know how many days it is, 10 days, 14 days, you know, don't go to the limit. But if you don't have your access code right now, you could either purchase the access code online here, or you could start working in the course in a trial period and provide your access code later. So I do want you to get going right away in the course. So if I clicked at newton.com, I would see this login screen because I've logged in before. And I'll log in in a second. But if I clicked on our course, I'd actually be taken to our physical course, of course, after I log in. So I guess I must well, might as well log in. Now, this is not, you set up the username and password here, right? So you cannot authenticate with your Delta College username and password until you've set up with account and you shouldn't necessarily use your Delta College username and password. You know, do whatever you ordinarily do. So this is a separate account. This is not at Delta College. 
but you get taken to our course right here. Uh, oh, I'm not going to do that. And this is our course from January 8 to May 1, roughly. And here are 30 topics that cover the whole course. Now, maybe you only see the first six of them right now because this is kind of chapters one and two-ish. But the idea here is that you enter the topic and uh, I'm not logged in as a student right now because there's always this problem like who's a student, who's the instructor. So you're not gonna see everything exactly as you would see it. But you can work through the problems here practicing the topics in each section. Now let me back out of here for a second. Notice the due date is Wednesday, April 28th. So don't get too excited about that. Notice the due time is always 11.59 p.m. Uh, if we were face-to-face, -face, I'd say, you know, paper is due in class. But setting due dates and due times right now in this environment is kind of crazy. So basically, I just set all my deadlines at 11.59 p.m. I'm not trying to prejudice against anyone. And I don't want you to stay up till 11.59 either. I'm just saying one universal deadline. <laughs> and then nobody gets confused, mostly asking, like, is that due by 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 2 o'clock? I just said everything due at 11.59, one minute before midnight. I don't choose midnight because then people, myself included, get confused whether it's 12 noon or 12 midnight. Deadline time's always this time. But back to the April 28th. Okay, here's what we're going to do. You notice all of these say April 28th. These first six things in front of you are kind of chapter one, chapter two, roughly, give or take a section. And I want you to work through all of these, but the Alta system is a different system. It's not necessarily a homework system. It's, it's more like a practice system. And the idea is you practice until you get it correct. And okay, good news, bad news. Bad news is if you get the problem wrong, they're gonna recycle you through some more problems or offer you some explanations, you're gonna to have to work it out. Good news is you can work in this at a reasonable pace until you get it 100% right. So your homework, your homework score in Alta at the end of semester, very much likely gonna be 100%. I've used this in other classes. You know, okay, people get 98%, they get 96%, they get 85%, they get 92%, they get 100%. You can work in these problems all the way to the end of the semester. I don't mind when you do them and score 100%. Each one of these sections that's in front of you, and they say it themselves. Okay, this is going to take you about 15 questions. This is going to take you about 20 questions. <coughs> you should do some planning. These sections that are here generally might be an hour or 90 minutes worth of work, sometimes more, sometimes less. But here you just get a chance to practice and execute in an environment where I'm not really marking you right or wrong. I'm just saying keep practicing till you master it. Let me go backwards to our syllabus. which might take a few clicks, <laughs> a few too many clicks. So that is Newton Alta system. I want you to see, I'm gonna go back to my resources page, that I don't want you to do everything on April 28th. So what I've done is taken the 30 topics and grouped them like those first six, seven topics we're going to be done covering those before February 1. And so I think you should have those completed before February 1, just so you're not 
doing old stuff all the time. So I've set kind of one, two, three, four, five benchmarks, six benchmarks through the semester. Kind of do this by this day, but they are not deadlines. I'm not going to mark you up or down on the homework. You get to do all these 30 sections as many times as you like till you get them perfect. And, and getting them perfect, you know, it, like I said, might be on the order of an hour in each section. You can tell me how you're working. You can tell me how it's going for you. Okay, so that's one part of your grade. I want you to also use a calculator, TI-84. I'll demonstrate for you, Desmos, Excel. I do want you every week or so to hand in one or two written problems just so I can help you practice learning to write this stuff. So you might need an application for your phone or computer that can scan and put together pages as a PDF. You cannot send me 15 photographs or three photographs or four photographs, upside down, left words, right words, dark, clipped off on a stack of Cheetos. No, 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 no. I want you to put together problems. I'll show you a problem in a second where you neatly have a couple pages for maybe a couple problems and you bring that into one PDF file and you send that PDF file to our assignments folder. Now, there's a lot of applications out there that help you do that very nicely. Uh, I, said, I said to you that I was on an Apple computer. I use Apple Notes. It's a very simple way to scan a document. And if you just go to the Apple Notes program, and here's a link to a description, you can just, it's built into a phone or an iPad. <coughs> you just click, 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 and you've got three pages as a single PDF file that you could upload. Microsoft Lens is kind of a similar thing for Microsoft Office. I think it's really good too. Maybe more people are using a PC, so I listed that first. Adobe Scan also works. Uh, I have a personal bias sometimes against Adobe because often Adobe's got a lot of adware thrown at you. And I don't like that because then you get stuck or you might accidentally install stuff on your computer that you don't want. So the Apple Notes and the Microsoft Lens are just straight up applications that scan your document or take a photograph and turn it into a PDF. Adobe Scan does the same thing, but it kind of bugs you with ads. You use the one that works for you. Uh, and I'll help you learn to prepare stuff as a single PDF file if you need help. I just want you to get you in the habit of when you're submitting a homework or an exam, that's a report. You're sending me a report. You wouldn't photograph three or four pages lopsided and send it to your supervisor at work. Of course, I know this is a different time, so you may very well be doing that. He or she may be doing that to you. But I want to help you present things organized and professional if I can. Official course dates, drop dates, refund dates, stuff like that, that is prevent, provided by the registrar course by course. So the rest of this, let me just go through quickly. I know you're being very patient even to listen to this, but I'm doing this for everyone. I'm the instructor, Dave Redmond. Dave is fine, David's fine, Mr. Redmond's fine, whatever you enjoy or are comfortable with. I regret in all the Zoom meetings and stuff like that, it almost takes away the pleasantries of talking to someone, meeting with someone. But the same goes for you. If, if your name is Frederick and you want to be called Fred, whatever you'd like your name pronounced or used, you just let me know. And I'll make a note of it, but yeah, definitely have to let me know. Uh, ordinarily, I'm in my office, which is G202, the first office in the math department as you walk in the door, but I will not be in my office anytime in the near future, apparently. 
uh, office hours. You see the links here, as you've seen them in other places. Really, the best way to get a hold of me is my Delta College email, and I answer it pretty quickly. So uh, it's the easiest way to catch me. It's the way I'm going to send emails to you, just because the college kind of has a thing that they want everything college business to be done on Delta College email. You might have alternate emails. I do too, but I'm going to use your Delta College email. You already know where my website is. Uh, office phone, again, I have an office phone. It, it might be turned on right now, but I don't recommend you using it. From time to time, I may be able to check it, but uh, email is the way you get a hold of me. Uh, if you had to mail me a package, <laughs> there's the address. And again, sometimes when you're in your office, that makes sense that people have to send you something in the mail, but right now it doesn't make that much sense. What are my expectations for you in this course? Like I said, I'll use your Delta College email address. I answer your emails in the order I receive them. That's at least one positive thing about email. First in, first out. And usually I cover everything within 24 hours. So you send the questions, I answer them in the order they appear. So if you have to wait for a couple hours or so, that means other people are in the queue ahead of you. Office hours are open to all the students in all my courses. And again, answer the questions in the order you ask them. Got it. Just double checking things. Uh, bring your questions to our office hours and the notes we write there, I will post. How do you succeed in this course? Statistics is a course where you got to do some reading, but that pays off. So you read the sections we're covering, you work through the examples and sections, which are not burdensome. Check out any handouts, videos, or technology examples we put on the website. I list recommended problems you should look at. We'll look at some later. And mostly what I'm doing right there is saying, you know, he's got, she's got, some excellent problems in this book. Not too many, not too few, not too busy, not too small. So if you are looking at a homework problem in the book, say you can check the answer to the odd one, you want to check the answer to the even one, or you check the answer to the odd one, it doesn't work, send me a note. Can you write a solution for number 17, Dave? and I'll write it and post it, and you can see how I would have done it, maybe. You might do it better or worse, but at least you could see how someone would have done it reliably. So you are on the spot to ask questions, and don't be shorted. You ask questions until you get your question answered. From any reliable source, instructor, tutor, classmate, I don't mind. I think the tutoring service at Delta College is reliable in this course. This is maybe not the hours are excellent, but then they got other tutoring services like mail in question, but you need to actively ask questions. Recommended problems, as I said, is just to test yourself as you're working. You don't have to do all the problems writing them down. I'm just asking you to check them, practice them. But if you are practicing a problem, you're not sure how it's done, just ask me and I'll write out a solution so you can see it in detail. So you can see how you should write. Here are the assessments you're gonna be graded on. Assessments, assignments, homeworks, quizzes, whatever word you like. You got the Newton Alta that you're gonna do at your own pace through the semester. And that you could pretty much get 100% on. Every week or so, not every single week, but 11 times during the semester, I'm gonna give you a written homework problems to submit. I'll show you the first one in a short time. And then you have three exams that you're gonna to submit to me. You are submitting them in writing because communication is writing. Writing is communication. That's how you're gonna operate in any job environment. So I want to show you how to make, first of all, the writing look complete and professional but then most importantly, correct. So the Newton Alta and homework problems, ask away, ask away. I'm not 
you know, I don't always answer you directly. I want you to do some of this work. So I might give you hints on some problems, but I don't mind if you work together or ask me or ask the tutor on the homework. The only thing that I require you do only by yourself is the exam. That is your individual work and it has to be prepared and submitted by you. And I have specific instructions for the exams, but we'll talk more about those as we get into them. How to prepare your written assessments to our folder. Make sure you organize and number your pages clearly. Make sure you put your name on each page. It's kind of goofy right now. You say, well, I emailed it and you got a note that it came from me. Yeah, but remember, I'm getting lots of classes, lots of students. You would be surprised sometimes people send stuff with no name on it, upside down, lightly written. I can track it down. I will track it down. But that takes a lot of time. So really, if you organize number your pages, write your name on each page. Include all the necessary calculations, to graphs and diagrams. Scan them correctly with one of these applications I've shared with you. You know, with good lighting, writing clearly, darkly, legibly on a normal paper size. I go through them very quickly. I return them to you. We'll talk about that later, how to return them to you. And organization improves your grade. Absolutely improves your grade. If something is hard to read, people are generally more critical of it, right? And you've probably experienced that yourself. Don't just take a photograph and send me PNGs or JPEGs with dark backgrounds that make it impossible for me to print or read. If you need help learning how to do this, I will help you. I consider it part of the service I'm providing. But I will hold you to the standard. Okay, how does technology go? We're gonna use a TI-84 calculator in Desmos. I'll open those up both in front of you in a short time. And you're really gonna to need to use those things just to help you do kind of crunchy, crunchy calculations. Uh, you do not wanna be adding and subtracting 100 numbers with a pencil and paper all the time. So then Excel is even useful here and I'll show you how to use that. Assignment deadlines, like I said, all deadlines 11.59 p.m. That goes for the written homeworks and the exams. Uh, if you have a schedule conflict, now when we come up to the exams, we'll talk about time of the exam and time deadlines. But if you have a schedule conflict, let me know ahead of time and I'll work with you, absolutely. But don't say afterwards, oh, I forgot to hand this in. Oh, I forgot to hand in the exam. No, no late homework, no late exams. Here's another situation, just all kinds of additional situations. Absolutely, if you need any assistance, you can contact the Disabilities Resources Office. And the college has signed all the documentation for this medical issue that we're dealing with, COVID-19. The college has signed that documentation to the Disabilities Resources Office. So if you need any help at all, or any accommodation because of problems related to COVID-19, please contact them. They will document it. I will work with you and I will work with them. I will work with you under all circumstances, but you need to let me know and the college officially requires records. Okay, we're at the bottom of the syllabus and the shortest part is grading because the grading is gonna be pretty short. You got your Newton Alta homework, 20%. Written homework, 20%. Each exam, 20%. Like I said, on the Newton Alta homework, you could ace all 20% of that right now. You can do 100% of that until you get it absolutely correct. I'm going to read and make comments on and sometimes make deductions on written homework and exams. I mean, that's kind of part of the process of learning. But just to make this easy to calculate, you just add those 
20% of Newton, 20% of homework, 20% of exams. And you add them together. I give you an example right here. If you had 98.2% on Newton and 86.7% on the homework and et cetera, et cetera, on the exams, that comes out to be, I got a little typo there, 0.812, which is like 81.2%. To me, it doesn't matter. 81.2%, I just round up, call it 82. And on the chart above, 82 is B. That's all I do to assign the grade. So I will also during the semester give you grade reports. So I'll give you regular grade reports so you can see where you are. And they'll include your current Newton Alta score, whether that's 95 or 92 or 67 or 100. But at the end of the semester, you'll be done with the uh, ALTA homework. So I'll give you grade reports. So you can always see where you are, and then you'll see the system working. And then it might make more sense. Right now, it's just words. OK, situation, situation. So uh, I see that I made my first error, or at least the first error that someone's notified me about. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen. I'm going to go back to my paper. And I'm going to correct this error. So uh, I wrote on the paper XYZ homework. Okay, that is another class. We're doing Alta, Newton Alta homework. So my mistake. So I showed you what that is and how to get to it, right? So, uh, and I showed you the textbook. So you can start diving into those. You could start working on that old homework right now, even after reading a few sections in chapter one. You can do the homework alongside the book reading. And I say that because if you got a homework problem wrong in the Alta system, you don't get penalized, you just have to correct it until you do it right. Okay, I will show you one more thing on a website with a written homework, and then let's actually do a statistics problem. Well, thank you for being patient. I'm gonna go back and show you one more thing on a website, where to find our written homework. Okay, so back to the website, back to Math 208 dive into week one. I've got a video going through everything on week one too, so I won't go through this hard right now, but outline assessments, handouts, video technology. After this class session is over and I record it in my YouTube playlist, then it'll show up here. Right now, if you went to the class session YouTube playlist, it's got nothing in it, right? But Every class session I'll record and post here. Uh, but I want to show you this homework. So here is your first homework. It is due on the 19th, which is Tuesday, one week from tomorrow. It's due at 11.59, of course, as we said. And you create your PDF file and you put it in this Math 28 Assignments folder. If you want to see what it is, I just picked a couple problems from chapter one, two problems, every week or so, one or two problems, not 10. And I just put this here as a piece of paper. So you could print this or copy it. Uh, it's up to you. Sometimes when a problem gets a little bit longer, copying is a pain. I'll try to avoid that by giving you something you can print out. These are literally two problems out of your book, 1.266 and 1.382, but I altered 1.3 a little bit. It had more pieces and I wanted to ask you for something else, which I'm about to demonstrate. So if I write 1.3 number 82 alternate, you can go look at 1.3 number 82, but I want you to do this problem. 
uh, as far as size wise is concerned, you're not going to fit the answer to the second problem on this half sheet of paper. I think you might have to attach a of paper. You might have to attach a graph. But my goal in these homeworks writing is not to make a hand in 10 pages, one or two or three probably. And sometimes they'll just fit on this one page. I appreciate that not everybody has a printer. I know that that's a problem. So if necessary, you just copy the problems and then copy the answers. If absolutely necessary, if a problem was like a lot of explanation and writing, then you just, you don't have to copy a page of explanation. You could just bring me the answer clearly labeled, right? But there's not too much writing here. Still, you could probably write just the answers to this part, as long as you make sure you're answering the questions that were given to you. Okay, so download, print, copy, whatever you have to do. This is homework number one. And every week, more or less, 11 homeworks, 16 weeks. So not every single week during the exam week or after the exam week, maybe you get the week off but more or less a couple problems a week just to help you practice writing. That's my goal. Okay. Um, I always confuse myself sometimes in my sharing or not sharing that screen. If I'm not sharing a screen and I'm talking about it, I'm going off for a few minutes, make sure to reel me back in. Okay. Let's actually do a problem. <laughs> and let me show you how I work. And uh, show you how you can do something in some technology like Microsoft Excel. Ordinarily, calculator is fine. And you can do quite a bit statistics with a calculator. And I'll show you how to do lots of things. But there are some things the calculator is not excellent at. Uh, in particular, when you're looking at this graph in front of you, it's, it's pretty, it's green, but it doesn't have labels on it. And any answer you bring has got to be clearly labeled so everybody understands what the pretty green rectangles mean. So the advantage of the calculator is it's portable, it's with you, it's fast, it does a lot of things, everything you need in this class, basically everything. But, you know, the tiny little window screen is kind of bare technology. Uh, I do not mind, you don't have to have a new version of TI-84, you, you can have any version of TI-84 or TI-83, sometimes TI-83 is dated, but even the old dot matrix style TI-84 is fine. These two calculators will do all the same things. This one on the left just does it in color. And it, it's got, it doesn't have more functions. It just is a little bit slicker, fits a little bit more on the screen. I don't know if I have graph there. Uh, sometimes I like this screen because it's non-reflective, whereas this screen tends to be messing around because it's like shines the lights and stuff like that. Okay, I also want to show you this website. So I'm going to go back to share screen for a second. You may have heard of this website, which is very cool. And where am I? I'm on that screen. Yes, I am, but I don't get the little green rectangle. Desmos.com. Desmos can do a lot of things. It's kind of an online graphing calculator. You can use it setting up an account or not. You don't pay for it. Even if you create an account, you don't pay for it. But at the very basic, basic thing right here, I got, uh, let me log into my account, because then I can share things with you, or you could share things with me. 
So the only problem would be if I remember my password. And I always got to check myself that I don't speak my password when I'm typing it. If you have that same problem. <laughs> but uh, let me see if I can show you something funny right there. You know, we're not, this is not the first thing we're going to do. Don't worry if you haven't seen something like this before. But this is called linear regression. It's not a crazy or difficult thing to do. Like in English, it's pretty simple to state how do you find the line that fits a set of points best? Here's some green points. And there's no line that goes through all four green points. What's the best line? And you can be a little bit incredulous at first. You say, what do you mean, what's the best line? I don't think that line's very good. No, actually, there is a best line. But here's something your calculator won't do. I wanted this point to be over here. OK, I want this point to be over here. I want this point to be down here. See, Desmos in real time is adjusting this window. You know, touch screen kind of thing, although I'm on a computer right now, so I'm using a mouse. Desmos is pretty awesome at making graphics. And it does lots of statistics calculations for you. As you can see, apparently it's doing some kind of statistics calculation. And if I look at the keypad under functions, it does trigonometry, statistics, distributions, that's also statistics, and other things like calculus, if you ever land in that class. But uh, it says it does histograms. It's not super duper at histograms. It does a lot of things that we could use in trigonometry, uh, in a statistics class, in PDF and CDF functions, probability distribution function, cumulative distribution function. Those are gonna be useful, the inverse distribution function. It does a lot of statistical calculations for you. I think the calculator still wins as far as horsepower and sheer number of calculations. But every once in a while, I will pull up Desmos because of the ability to just change things easily on the fly. Makes a much better demonstration. I also want to show you this on my website. We're in week one. Go down to technology. Notice, and, and if I create a Desmos thing for you, I'll put a link to it down here. Or if I create a calculator demo for it, I'll put a link to it down here. But notice I have this Excel file on my web page. Let me click on that Excel file. When you click on that, what you're going to do is go to a Google Drive here. This is just a public Google Drive where I'm going to put a file that you could download and use. And I want to show you this file in a few minutes. I think now yeah, we're tight on time, but we're not doing bad. So if I want to show you how to use an Excel file, I could just post it in this open Google Drive. You could download it. And then you could open it. Now, when you open it, I have to show you a different window. So I'm going to go share screen quickly. So this is the Excel spreadsheet that I posted on my web page that you could own and use. Uh, the wording is a little bit small. When I share a screen with you, you get to see everything on my screen, which is not that exciting, but at least you get to see whole windows and you get to see menu choices I make. So that might be useful. Pop-up windows, et cetera. Now, this thing that I did right here is similar to what you're gonna do in that first written homework. So, and this is an example out of the book. Let me see if I can pump up the words for you. So this is example 
117 in chapter one. And someone collected information about how many miles people drive to work. And they got the responses, two, three, four, five, seven, 10, 12, 13, 15, 18, 20. In fact, three people said five. And three people said 10, and one person said 15, but only one person said 20. That's called frequency. The data, how many miles did you drive to work? The frequency, maybe a couple people drove the same number of miles. Relative frequency is the percentage of people that drove two miles or three miles. 10.5% or 0.153 people drove two miles. What was the most? Got these threes right here. 15.8% of the people drove 10 miles. Another 15% drove five miles. Cumulative relative frequency says, let's add up all the relative frequencies to this point. And I can show that to you. Where does this 1579 come from? It comes from, if I highlight the formula bar, it comes from adding these two numbers. This total before, the total for the previous data, plus the total of this new data. And here's a spreadsheet. Maybe you haven't used spreadsheets before. I'll show you how to use them. But it's basically a spreadsheet is like a fancy, fancy, fancy calculator. It's doing these calculations for you. And the cumulative frequency is interesting because it basically shows you how things add up until you've covered everybody in your survey. How do I calculate the number 1579 here? Well, apparently I took three divided by 19. I put my cursor in the formula bar. Three divided by 19 must be 0 0.1579. And 0 0.0526 must be one divided by 19. I wrote a formula. This equals B16, the blue cell, divided by equals B19, the red cell. That's a formula. The dollar sign in front of the 19 keeps this line fixed on 19. So that I could just write the formula once and then drag it down to fill in all the boxes. Okay, that's some kind of Excel goodness I'm gonna show you. The beauty is in when you make a picture, right? I want to see with my eyes how many people drive 20 miles. I see immediately with my eyes that most people drive five, 10 miles. Those were the winners. This is relatively evenly spread, right? How does that work out as I add up all my records from two miles to three miles to four miles to five miles to seven miles to 10 miles to 12 miles? Here is me counting everybody that I surveyed until by the time I get to 20 miles, <coughs> I've got 100% of the people, one cumulative relative frequency. Relative frequency is a percentage, you could say it that way. And cumulative relative frequency just is adding up all the percentages that came before. So that by the time I check the person out with 20 miles travel, I have covered everybody in my group the relative frequency and the cumulative relative frequency. I'll see if I can get that on my screen at the same time because I blew up the size, right? But the relative frequency and the cumulative relative frequency are just two different ways of representing the data. But I didn't do anything clever to create these charts. All I did, let me erase one of the charts and show you. All I did was write a table where I organized the information. And for the frequency chart, then I just 
took the two boxes here, data and frequency, and told Excel to insert a chart. Excel even recommended a chart to me. Okay, doesn't like the way I selected it. Let me fix that. There. I said to myself, oh, I wanted this one. And there's the frequency chart. It's got the labels that tell me the frequency on the vertical column. It's got labels here that tell me the miles that were traveled. Now I could add other decorations. I could add words, I could add colors, I could add titles, but notice it just took the title frequency from my work. Notice also that it highlighted the stuff it was using to make this table. You could draw this table by hand. You will draw tables by hand. But it's also nice to have table immediately presented to you, right? Uh, you say, well, your, your bars are thick here and they're not thick here. I can decorate these. So I can format a data series or select different data. That's a fancier Excel functions. So right there, I made the bars zero overlap, 50% gap width. I don't want you to focus always on decorating things, but I'll show you how to decorate things if you want to know how. And that's how I made that chart. Unless a problem says, draw this by hand, I do not mind if you use a computer or Excel to make a chart. I, I will comment on your charts. I will say, oh, you're missing this, or you need to add this, or you should do this, or too fancy, you're obscuring the stuff with the decoration. But I don't mind if you use Excel to make a chart. Okay. This is, I'm going to get rid of this. I don't need to save this because I already have a copy. But I'm going to go back to this screen right here. Okay. That's in that Google Drive. I don't want you to worry about damaging this. All you can do is download it. So you can't do any damage to it. You download it, then it's on your computer. You do whatever you want to it. If you mess up the formulas or something, or you want to experiment with the formulas, go ahead. You won't change this one that I'm providing for you here. Okay. I appreciate your patience and pretty much, I'm not going to keep you over 90 minutes here. So I just got two or three minutes left, 85 minutes. If you want to go by the college's schedule. I want to show you one more thing. I'm looking for a handout. Oh, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. I wanted to do a problem with you on that spreadsheet. I didn't get enough time to show you exactly how I did everything in that table or what it was asking you for. But this is, again, how we're going to roll a little bit. I posted a sample problem here that looks like what I just showed you. So I want you to work through these problems that I list as recommended. You don't have to do every one of them. Just try them out. And if you're trying something out that's not working, just ask me, and I'll put up an answer like this. Problem number 84, do you see that that's a link? And that link will take you to a folder. Well, it'll take you to the homework solution that I posted in Google Drive. I cheated. I just printed out the page from the book and wrote on the page. So I don't mind if you do that either since you have the electronic book. But here I was showing you how you create the numbers to make that picture. It is not the same problem that I just showed you for the Excel spreadsheet. This problem talks about CEOs of publicly traded companies or something, right? But it does show you how to make a relative frequency graph and a cumulative relative frequency graph. 
And I'm not going to do these calculations in front of you right now, but I want to show you something interesting. Do you see how the picture represents the table? And the values in the picture represent a lot of interesting things about the table, right? Here's a survey. Uh, you know, not many CEOs of publicly traded company be between the ages of 70 and 74 within these parameters. Not many between 40 and 44. Immediately, you look at this data and you look at this picture and you say, well, looks like most of them are between 50 to 59, 45, 64, less above 65, much less above 70. Look at the cumulative relative frequency graph. How do you see that here? You see jump, jump, big jump, bigger jump. See, you're, by the time you get to 59 years old, you've got nearly 80% of the CEOs. By the time you get to 64, you've got maybe 90% of the CEOs. Let's go check the table. Oh yeah, 60 to 64, cumulative relative frequency. You have 88.3% of the CEOs. I'm throwing terms at you you haven't read yet, maybe. But you read through these, you'll understand those words. These calculations are just taking fractions and decimals to represent the data you're seeing. By 69 years old, you pretty much got almost all the CEOs. Maybe you're adding one more. That's what it says, one more. But by putting things in a relative frequency and a cumulative relative frequency, as opposed to just making boxes that are three squares high or 11 squares high or 13 squares high, relative frequency and cumulative relative frequency, they allow you to compare graphs where simple raw numbers would not. Okay, that's what I want you to read. That's what I want you to see in this problem. And you will read and understand that as you go through the book this week. I'll point out one more thing to you and I'll go back to my paper. Uh, this is just the way I like to work. You don't have to work the way I work, but statistics is a great deal. Let me stop sharing and go back to my camera. Statistics is a great deal about what words and definitions mean. So frankly, as I get prepared to talk to you, I'm doing the same thing you're doing, reading the book, doing problems, making examples for you. But I myself, I just like to go through the book, write down every definition that I see, usually nicely bold faces in a book, you know, write down some explanation. Exactly what is data, mean, proportion? What is a pie chart? What is a bar chart? What is a Pareto chart? Everything sounds like foreign language to you get working on it. What we were looking at were bar charts. Sorry, didn't fit under my camera. Okay, so I'm not telling you how to work. I'm just saying the book at the beginning is gonna throw a lot of words at you. Qualitative data, quantitative data quantitative discrete data, quantitative continuous data. And you need to be conversant in those words. You need to know what they mean. So we can speak to each other. And they're not gonna be hard to get, but I like to write things down and take notes myself in the book while I'm working. And so that's the kind of things that I do. Uh, you know, a simple illustration, I don't speak many languages. I, well, if I was really honest, I speak English. Sure, I took some Spanish in high school. Sure, I've been to Germany and I could speak a little German. If you dropped me in Germany in a parachute, I would not die. I would not starve. And I'm not mocking Germany or Germans at all. I mean, I can say bratwurst. I can do a little bit of German. Right? But what do I lack? I lack the vocabulary. And so somebody in Germany trying to have a conversation with me in German is not going to be very impressed with me because I don't 
have an awesome vocabulary. I mean, I can find the bus station, the train station. I can get from point A to point B. I know how to find out where the bathroom is, the restaurant, the supermarket. I can go through a supermarket and purchase food and not die. But I'm not doing a very good conversation in German. You need to do a conversation now in statistics. And you won't do it unless you learn that vocabulary. Book's going to help you. I'm going to help you. But there's no substitute. Someone's not going to speak for you. You have to go through and learn those words. Okay, you dive in. I've already kept you four minutes faster than longer than I wanted to. I didn't give you any opportunities to ask questions. I apologize for that. Uh, you can always shoot me questions on email. Even if you're watching this as a recording, you can hang out and ask questions later if you like, but I'm gonna stop the recording.